And today we're going to talk about the expenses of your practice. Now, before your eyes glaze over and your head hits the desk in front of you, this truly is an extremely important portion of your success. It's very important. So strap it in and listen. You might want to take a couple notes. You're going to most definitely want to take a couple notes. So if you're contemplating launching your own practice, either after being an associate doctor for a number of years, or maybe you're fresh out of chiropractic college, you're going to need to know how to estimate your expenses. And you're going to have to have a working knowledge on, on, on how to make this as accurate as possible for two main reasons. If you're applying for a loan, be it SBA or some other type of, of loan, the lender is going to require that you build what's called a pro forma. You can call that a budget. The terms tend to be synonymous. And you're going to have to have a solid estimate what your anticipated expenses are going to be, especially for that first year. Now, the second reason you want to know what your expenses are going to be and how to calculate it, because you're going to need to know if you're high uh, or if you're low, uh, and you're certainly going to need to know when you're going to hit break even. And if you're on track, well, this information is critical to you successfully launching your practice and building the practice of your dreams. So I'm Dr. Chris Tomshak, CEO of HealthSource America's Chiropractor, and you're watching the Chiropractor's Solution Channel, which is the video series that we put together to help you grow your chiropractic practice and your career, both professionally and personally. It matters. So hello and welcome. And before we dive into expenses, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so that you can continue to receive these videos. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up to make it easier for other DCs to find this channel. So you did not go to school to be an accountant, right? Well, neither did I. But I did study accounting at both the undergrad and graduate levels. And some of that stuff does really apply to you as a chiropractor. So hang with me on this information. We're going to make it easy to understand. This is, a, this is a small part of the business side of running your practice that you were not taught. And what's worse is that darn few chiropractors know, what, you know what's normal and what is not in relationship to the expenses of a practice. So for this conversation, I'm going to break all your expenses down into not 20 different expense categories, which is what an accountant does, but just four, four expense categories. This will make it much easier to grasp and monitor. This will also make your life a lot less complex, and you don't have to study that incredibly boring topic of accounting. First, you need to know what an expense category is, so this makes sense. And an expense category is, it's a grouping of similar type expenses that fit neatly into one category. So the easiest to think about right now is payroll. We'll make that number one. If you're launching a new practice, you'll probably start your new business, your new clinic with just two people, you and a front desk specialist. As you get busier, the next team member you would be employing would be a rehab specialist. And this person will quickly do everything for you except chiropractic, which is examining and adjusting patients. This employs the principle of leverage, and it's how to start to build far more freedom into your world than what almost all chiropractors experience today. But let's get back to the four expense categories. Let's cover leverage on another day. So the four broad expense categories, and you want to write this down. Number one is rent. The second one is uh, payroll. The third one is marketing. And the fourth is general operating expenses. Now, in real life, your accountant will definitely break these down further, and they're going to add in line items such as um, the biggies are insurance, the student loan repayment, um, legal fees, uh, maybe dues and subscriptions, and there are several others. But let's keep it simple for today. And remember, you're estimating these expenses for now, and as you get further in the process, you'll be using actual numbers instead of what you're estimating today. Then you plug in the, the actual expenses along with your clinic's actual revenue, and you can watch and, and you can then manage your clinic wisely as it begins to scale. This is a crucial aspect of owning and running a clinic that most chiropractors never do correctly. Instead, typical DC will only know if they're making money by checking the bank account at the end of the month and, wow, okay, we got money left over, we made money. Well, that's a recipe for stress never-ending stress, uh, and disaster. So let's unpack the four expense categories a bit. The first category uh, the large, is the largest expense you're going to have, payroll. If you've got financing such as a bank loan or maybe from an excited parent, <laughs> yeah, what I hope you do, you'll be putting yourself on a small salary to start. So for today's conversation, let's call it $50,000 a year. 
then you'll add in the salary for your front desk specialist. Now also remember to add in the extra FICA tax plus the other taxes and, and lump it together in this expense category, which you can get from your bookkeeper. This is not difficult information. You'll quickly see that if you're paying yourself 50,000 and your front desk specialist earns, let's say 36,000, simple math would say 50 plus 36, well, that's $86,000. Guess what? That's wrong. It'll be quite a bit higher than that once you add in the applicable taxes, unemployment insurance, work comp, uh, and of course, benefits. If you wanna keep and hold your, your, your team members' benefits are crucial, never more crucial than they are today. You'll get the final number from your accountant or bookkeeper. So for this example, let's say instead of 86,000, let's call it 100,000 for payroll. And let's backtrack just a moment before you shout loudly that you didn't go to college for eight years to earn $50,000, I understand and agree with you. This is only an initial estimate. In fact, what, here's how we do it. When, when we build pro formas or budgets for, for new offices in HealthSource, we end up with an overage at the end of the first year, an excess of money. And that money is then distributed back to you, the owner, the chiropractor. We actually estimate you'll earn quite a bit more than 50,000 in your first year of ownership, quite a bit more. You should end up earning more than you earned, quite a bit more than as an associate, especially in year one. Now, if you've got, if you feel that you're, uh, you had some issues with what you've earned as an associate DC, uh, was it fair? Was it unfair? I would love, this is a learning experience. So tell us about that in the comments section below. This would be pretty interesting, especially to students and those looking for a new associate position. But let's get back to the expense categories. Your second expense category is rent and utilities. This is the easiest expense category to estimate. Simply add in all the different utilities you'll be responsible for paying. Now get this, some landlords pay the water, some pay the water and the electric, and some pay nothing. That's called triple net. Assuming you know an estimate of what the rent payment's going to be, add in reasonable utility numbers for the total. Now, let's make this simple. A very easy way to gather this information is to visit an owner of a business in a strip center in which you want to practice and ask them what those expenses are. Now, the next expense is marketing, expense number two. So yes, you're going, I'm sorry, it's number three, you're going to need to advertise and market your new practice so the community knows why you're the best option for them. As your practice scales or grows and is more mature, let's call it a year, investing 7% of all revenue that comes into the practice in marketing is a very sound place to be. But we're talking about a new practice, right? So it's going to be higher than 7% initially. I mean, assuming you want to grow fast, hit break even soon, and then create a nice lifestyle for you and your family, I'd start higher than that. So what do you think is a good marketing investment to start? I suggest you invest at least two to $3,000 a month initially, at least. This is a strong enough number that will allow you to market on all the relevant digital platforms. It'll, you know, it'll also uh, make sure that you're doing guerrilla style or low cost, no cost marketing. Uh, and, and this will help foot the bill for, for that as well. Very, very necessary. So last up, fourth category are your general operating expenses. And that covers everything else. It covers you know, anything from internet cost to headrest paper. In other words, everything else. Now, most of these costs are variable. That means they rise as your practice gets busier. The good news is that this expense category is your smallest expense category, and you can estimate very small here, such as about $2,000 per month. And there you have it, a very simple and straightforward way to estimate expenses for your initial budget or pro forma. So what do you do with this information? Well, building the budget or pro forma, is, it's, you know, it's not a lot of fun, honestly, but monitoring your progress against the budget is extremely interesting. At the conclusion of each month, you simply compare the budget you built against the actual numbers. So very qu quickly, you're going to understand if you're what we call on track or off track, and you'll know where this is happening. Uh, either the expenses are too high or the revenue isn't high enough, or maybe it's both. The critical point here is that you will know, and when you understand what is broken, you immediately can alter or improve your strategy so you can fix it so you can get, get to the best place of all, which is what we call being over track. You're ahead of plan and you're going to earn a much better income than you budgeted. Very cool.
And that's nice. So remember, profit uh, is not a four-letter word. Without profit, you go out of business and have to go back to work for someone else, often working evenings and weekends in an adjustment factory. And that's probably not what you want. So let's get you successful serving more people that need your help. Your community needs you to be extremely successful. If you found this video interesting and hopefully helpful, grab our free report for chiropractors at hsfranchising.com. It'll show you how to scale a state-of-the-art practice. It's the same game plan we followed to make last year our very best year of growth we've ever experienced, and we're duplicating that growth right now. We blew away our projections, and you can do the same thing. So if you want what others have, do what they do, and you'll get what they get. So again, head over to hsfranchising.com. Check out our videos. I think you're going to like them. As always, I welcome your feedback and opinions on this topic in the comments below. I look forward to hearing from you. Have an amazing day.